Eivor, hello. Another dark day clouds our victory. Bishop. Uber. Dead at the hands of a Briton. I cannot imagine the shame my brother felt in his final hour. Were it not for this peace, I killed him. You! After peace was made, Ivar murdered Chelbelt and pinned the crime on Rotary to get another swing at him. How do you come to know this? He told me himself. I am always one who desires the truth, Eivor. But this... This is a hard thing to hear. Did he die well? He died a fighter, in all his glory. As he wanted then. With Ivar gone, peace and quiet are now possible. That is something. I will console myself for the thought that we will meet again in Valhalla. Axe in hand. You will. For good or ill, he lived life by his own rules. What man can say better? He lived his life at cross purposes. I often found him strange and his actions puzzling. But not all men are meant to be understood. He needs a proper farewell. I will prepare a ship for his funeral pyre. Bishop, send word to Lady Angharad. Say that her husband died by treachery, and that Ivar has paid the price for it. As soon as I am able. Have you heard from King Chaelwulf? I cannot imagine his grief. He is felled by it. Still, he makes plans for this shire. I am to be Elderman here. Therefore, Shiropshire declares herself your friend and ally, and will remain so for the length of my days. I'm grateful, Bishop. God go with you, Eivor, wherever you may lead. sails into a singing glory on a flaming water steed. Wind across the water. The battle maidens beat their wings to carry a king to Odin's hall of corpses. with Shirapshire, but at a grievous cost. Young Chelbet was killed. Yes, my scouts told me. Such a tragic death for so dubious a gain. I hope you paid his killers back in kind. Justice was done. Chilbert will be remembered. He was good company in the short time he was with us. He was. I want to see the Alliance map. Tell me more about Kent. Basim has written, claiming to have found the woman Fulke and asking for your aid. He has taken shelter at St. Hadrian's Priory. Any news of Sigurd? Nothing he mentioned. But if he has found the paladin Fulke, Sigurd cannot be far behind. I will go as soon as I can. Good. Be safe, Favor. Dag, Basim has brought word of Seeker's location. We're leaving at once to find him. Well done, Eivor. After so long, it finally occurs to you to search for our Jarl. 
I applaud your half-hearted effort, but I will not be joining you. Dag, this is no joke. On the ship, now. Someone needs to stay home and direct the affairs of the settlement. As you seem to shun this place as often as possible, it must fall to me. If you wish to stay, so be it. But when Sigurd is back among us, we'll see what status you have among the raiders. Say whatever makes you feel superior, Eivor. I know Sigurd will understand my decision. Do you doubt me so completely that you will not raise an axe to save your Jarl? A fine way of putting it, Wolfkist. But go, find the Jarl, bring him back. Only do not get lost along the way, as you seem to more and more these days. This is not done, Dag. We will speak when I return. make a distinction between faith and... What I mean to say is, faith is paramount. Yes. For without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists, because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. No, I mean... That is too simplistic. Or the priest, whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor. And I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. So what of the Joy Kanga Fulke? In your message, you said you tracked her to Kent. She is here somewhere. And as of last month, Sigurd was with her. But there is no guarantee this will be the case tomorrow. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone, not with a prisoner in tow. So, where to begin? I've made a friend, Abbot Cunibert, full of pious fire, but with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come, I will introduce you, and we'll hear the full tale together. Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basim? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty, the Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we've met, you sound more like you're a princess than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition. But it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important. And I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. 
Bassam says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. If you know where Fulke is, do not rattle my bucket. Tell me now, and we'll talk terms later. The hot-tempered one stirs up strife, Basim. Will this rebellion cake Dane do what I ask? Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement. ...but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which Thane has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him. Before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? The King's Emissary. Sent with a letter of congratulations to the new Elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the Thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. If we do this, how will you find Fulke? I want some kind of assurance. Do you have ears in every church, abbey, and cathedral in Kent? Because I do. And I will find her. And we will do the deeds to staining for a Christian soul. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll give the Elderman's name. You find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenstone has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you at Falkenstein. <laughs> Alfred's emissary spent a few days here. Someone may know where he went. Did she speak? I'm in no mood for wind belching, so choose your words well. The King's emissary. I need to know where he went after he stayed here. And I need to know why I've started getting boils under my armpits. Time will tell, eh? Alfred's emissary. Where? Him and the Bard ended up in a copse by the bridge doing Lord knows what. Sounded like they were murdering a cat. Singing? If you say so. Are you sober enough to answer me? You have fine hair. It shimmers like... woven silk. I don't have time for flattery. I see Galford's emissary. The only man of Alfred's I know is Orvin the Legless. And he is... <laughs> Haven't seen him in years. Probably dead drunk, or just dead in a ditch. Why do you think they called him Legless? Because he has no legs? <laughs> He's a figure of speech, Lord in heaven. I've no time for your twittering. The Danes? Do they not nestle at our borders like ash-scaled serpents? Danes in Kent? Get away with you! I'm busy. Leave me be. 
Oh, you're not welcome here. Unlikely staggered off the white cliffs. So who will take his place? Thane Fairfax, Landry, Tedman, on top Stay away from me, stranger. Must be blocked from the other side. and lollygagging. I'm looking for someone. An emissary from Alfred. Have you seen such a man? Ooh, la -de da Listen to you all, I and mighty. Get away with you, you valley lily. <laughs> Tell me what you know, or this will go badly. For you, maybe. I'll be dead and you still won't know a thing. You're a strange fish. Did you see the man or not? I did. He was getting pie-eyed with that barred gowan and causing quite a ruckus. They left together. See? That wasn't hard, was it? Harder than it should have been. There was a bard drinking with the emissary. I should find him. See if he knows anything. Swamp scum can't have gone far. Someone stole my trues. La, 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 la. Funny, funny. You there, you alive? <laughs> Patience is a tired horse. Plod -de plod plod. <laughs> Another tottering teat sucker who can't hold his drink. Let's clear your head. Oh! Oh, it's cold as a witch's tit in here! Oh, God's truce! Fire on you! Oh! What infernal wakes me? Are you the tale weaver? Gowan the dandelion. For the seeds of my stories flit upon the winds of Wessex. But why, mule, do you kick my noggin? You and Alfred's emissary were drinking in the tavern. Tell me where he went. Were we? I was so ale addled. Perhaps a small and silver thing upon my palm might help me recall? Have some coin, and rent a proper bed for the night. Oh, bless you! For stories are my currency, friend. How else am I to make my living? A more honest profession? Plowing fields, milking cows. Manual labor? God's blood! There's a fortress to the southeast where paladins pray by night and fight by day. Dover, on the White Cliffs. My thanks. And in return, wisdom. 
Too much beer bibing will grow a fool in wit and words. My thanks, weaver of the obvious. Now leave me to my unholy punishment.